How much time do you want for your progress? Progress. Progress. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Clatter Chatter on Things That Matter, the podcast that is intellectually engaging, theologically reflecting, encouraging sociologically, imagining ways in which we can live. Thank you for spending this short amount of time with us. We promise you that you will not regret a moment of it. Shout out to Trevor Smith and B.J. Herbert for commissioning this fantastic music to get our minds going on things eternal, positive, and fulfilling life's purposes. All right, Dr. Hayes, here we go. On January, is it the 19th? It might be. It's the 19th. It's January 19th. Yeah, January 19th, 2022. We're knocking the hell out of this month. First month of 2024, an interesting uh, configuration of days thus far. And, um, here we go. Greet everybody. How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm oh, still go I'm still shut in. I think about I'm thinking about going out today for a minute. Just go to the grocery store. Well, but it's, it's, I'm I'm happy to be in in the warm environment and uh, everything is good. Yeah, it ain't worth it, Celia. Show sure ain't worth it. Cause look. <laughs> Here we go. I went to the emergency room yesterday and um, I was having this little pain that went from my, my felt like my heart to the back of my shoulder behind mm. my back, mm. shoulder blade. I mean, it was like pierced me right through, just feel it. And so I didn't want to play around with it. Um, although I had the day before I had traveled to a community to speak for their Martin Luther King celebration, University Hastings College, in fact. And I had loaded up my my um, travel bags uh, for this winter weather because, you know, we've been in this polar vortex. That's interesting, right? With this polar vortex, it's so it's so warm in the North Pole region that the Arctic air is seeping down to where we are. So Santa Claus don't have to go to the North Pole. If he just hang around in January, he could just have his little reindeer living here. And that's the ramification of global warming. So anyway, so I go to uh, this little community and uh, I got my little bag, got my snow shovel, got my fur coat, got my backpack, got my weighted blanket, black pack full of survival stuff because I'm ready. I'm ready. And I think I was carrying it too much. And anyway, long story short, And I was scooping the sidewalk as I left. And I know I'm in pretty cardiovascular good health and because I work out with the trainer and and she's intentional about some of the things that I do. But anyway, woke up yesterday and I felt like I said, I know I ain't ready to go see Jesus, although I love the Lord. I ain't ready to see see him face to face. I can wait a few more days (laughs) if if I can, you know. So I get to urgent care and they're like, you know, with the uh, <laughs> Dr. Hayes, I got to reveal this thing. I, I hopped in the shower, got dressed, put on my perfume, my lipstick and everything. Because, you know, for any eventuality. And I, while I'm hurt, I said, well, if I pass out here, at least I want to smell fresh. So I made it downstairs to the doorway. Go to eat the urgent care. And they're trying to put the leads on the body. I got so much Vaseline and lotion on the stuff was sticking. <laughs> and the nurses and the physician's assistant, they were just cracking up. I was like, you know, I don't want to be ashy. It's too cold. You know, I don't want, and I mean, they went hard in the pain about this whole people with dry skin and what that looks like and everything. I said, well, you probably won't see that amongst black people because, you know, we don't like being ashy, period, all year long. 
most of us. And so I, I took my Vaseline bathing and then I got me some Vaseline lotion just to seal all of that stuff in because I don't like dry skin. <clears throat> But anyway, Dr. Hayes, so they, they finally got the leads on it and they were on the fence of whether or not it was uh, some peculiarities. And so the lady said, well, you know, because women present differently when it comes to heart attacks, we don't have the normal or what has been culturally um, uh, known as the what it feels like to have a heart attack, not your left side, not the pain in the chest. That typically doesn't happen to women because we present differently. And she was saying sometimes you could be in the process of a heart attack and not know it. And women have just out, you know, thought it just maybe a stomach ache or something like that. So I was like, well, you don't have to uh, convince me and I'm not going to lean into Dr. Google. I'm going to the experts. So I went to the ER because they said, you know, the ER will be able to do more intentional stuff with the lungs and all this other kind of stuff. So I get there and fast forward and long story short, here's, here's what the diagnosis pretty much has been. It is either a, um, a microskeletal pain around the heart because there are a lot of muscles and everything and the heart is a muscle and there are a lot of other little muscles upholding the rib cage and everything. And sometimes you could tweak it, you know, and it feels like you're having a heart attack because the pain is there. Or it could have, or it could have been a, a pleuritic, um, pleuritic pain from inhaling cold air, pleurisy from inhaling the cold air. And I, granted, I didn't have my mouth covered up. I knew better. I'm, here we are, wind chill minus thirty five, and I'm walking and I'm trying to be cute because I got my lipstick on and I don't want. I knew better when I didn't have my hat on my head because my hair was all, you know. I I was ready to go to do this speech and. Sometimes the hard head make a soft behind, Dr. Hayes. And so <laughs> say all that to say, it ain't worth going out there, even if you get stir crazy. I don't feel like I want to go back outside to the spring. At least <laughs> older than my age. And I'm 55. <laughs> I don't feel like it's going anywhere. I know either. I know either. I'm not even looking forward to, but I'm running out of some things. And I think I, I'd rather go than try to make a list for somebody else to do. It's not that far. It's just down the road a piece. And uh, so I'm going to venture. I talked to my son. I told him I was going to go. He said, you, you think you, you, you think you're going to be able to, I said, it's, it's just, a, I, he said, well, the streets are kind of, I said, okay, well, I'll let you know if I decide not to. But um, every now and then, you have to have an adventure in your life. You have to be willing to go to what we would refer to as unknown places. And not that the place is foreign to you, but, but you haven't been to that place uh, under these conditions in the in the state of mind that you're in so every time we go even to familiar places it's an adventure to a new place because it's a new experience um and so i i encourage people to to venture uh into areas that they may not have gone into before and to explore and to investigate and see what you can learn it may be just one little thing or what you can enjoy. It may be just one simple encounter that makes you smile. But whatever it is, I said, we have to be willing to go to that unknown place. And that's what our relationship with God is all about. Um, God is always leading us out into a wider field uh, to explore some things that maybe we have not thought about before. When we come to the scriptures, as you look at them in light of current events, you you see them differently. And uh, I know you know all about that, but um, people are wondering and thinking, how do, how do the events of the day figure into our eternal destiny? And uh, so... I like to I like to think I'm more of a thinker than than anything else. Uh, 
And it's okay to wonder. And it's okay to wander as you wonder. I know that's the grant that I wrote um, a couple of years ago for the Lily Endowment. That's that's the name of From Wonder to Wonder. Um, from Wonder to Wonder, you know, uh, about pastors thriving and how do we not be stagnant. But here's the thing, and I want to go back to the curiosity that is innate because we're naturally curious that and we we want to go. Everything is temporal. Um, and and we're on this this journey towards something. Hopefully it's the move towards good. But here's something that's strange that happened um, again yesterday. Uh, for the first time in the history, there's a new word in the lexicon that has only been used one time when it comes to weather events. And that's called a snow squalls. S Q U A L L S. Mm -hmm. And yesterday afternoon, about 3 30, 4 o'clock, uh, alerts went off. Got this national alert said to take cover. The snow squall is happening. If you don't need to be on the road, don't delay your travel. If you're on the road, pull over because you cannot see. A snow squall, as the meteorologists were explaining it, is it's beyond, it's worse than whiteout. If you can imagine looking at a bottle of, of whiteout, the old typewriter stuff, it's worse than whiteout. The visibility is absolutely nothing. And what makes it worse is it's for a shorter duration. Snow squall, in my imagination, is almost like a tornado. It's But it's it's the snow. But here's, here's why... Mm -hmm. But, but here's how it's, it's worse. Okay, so the wind is blowing. It's not a blizzard. The wind is blowing. All this is happening cataclysmically, all at the same time. The wind is blowing. The snow is coming down. The temperature has dropped. So you got ice, you got snow, you got the wind, and zero visibility. Snow squalling. It's squall. It's like, how do you describe that? How do you explain that? And, and, and it was after... It, the duration was, it was moving like 45 miles an hour. And so highways and it just happened so quickly. People didn't see it coming. It mm -hmm. just happened so quickly. Where are you going to run to? You know, it just that nobody could predict that this was going to happen. Like you could see a tornado. You see the, the funnel clouds, et cetera. Hurricane, you get notices about hurricanes 10 days before they hit you. But that snow squall, Dr. Hayes, it hit lickety split and the cars piled up this wow. is this is so deadly you couldn't see anything and it felt apocalyptic if mm. i could use that language but mm -hmm. here's the thing it's like it was worse than a fire because you know when the wildfires hit, you get some warnings but the snow squall dr hayes comes out of nowhere mm -hmm. comes out of nowhere and it's short and I, I just, I just don't even understand how do we get here? And again, this is a new meteorological term, snow squalls. And I'm wondering if, if we as humans have journeyed so far away from the essence of what it means to be human to where mother nature is just pissed off. <laughs> mother nature, they got off her meds, you know? <laughs> She, she, she's beyond schizophrenic and the polarity. Mother Nature's like, no, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. When I say it's 35 below zero, that's not the wind chill. That's how it's feeling. Stay your ass at home. Ain't nothing mm -hmm. I hear you need because I'm about to clean up the people who don't have no better sense. <laughs> I have learned, Dr. Hayes, that whatever that it takes for me to be still and know that God is God, I'm going to do that. So when I came back from the ER yesterday, I went to this P.O. box. I don't even know why I do this. It's part of my ritual. I went to this P.O. box. And as I was driving back, that was empty. As I was driving back home, I see four squirrel, a squad of squirrel. And I mean, those squirrels are big as cats. And I said, Lord, you put these squirrels right here for me to see them. To let folks know winter is not over. Then a good friend of mine who lives in Omaha sends a picture of about 
10 to 15 cardinals in her mm. backyard, bird feeders. And I said, those cardinals are messengers of God. And I, I never mean, see more than one at a time. I never it, see more than one. Oh my God. It was at least five. And it was a beautiful sight to see. And I told her, I said, just take it in. I was so grateful that she shared it. So when my dad died, I saw a cardinal. When my mother's brother died, there were two cardinals. And I said, okay, I see daddy and uncle, uncle uh, uh, Walter flying together. You know, it was just a, that's why the Catholic church used cardinals as part of their uh, hierarchical structure. Cardinal neck is underneath the Pope. Those are the messengers of God, if you will. But nature's telling us a whole lot, but that's a bird walk, no pun intended. But I tell you what, sometimes we just got to, Oh, Pay attention. I guess that's the whole point, you know. Don't miss it. Uh, because the warning signs are more important than the event. When you when you get warning signs, it's your opportunity to sit up and take notice and to change course if necessary. In the Bible, it, it uses the word repent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sit up, take notice, and change the direction of your life so that you won't end up uh, on a losing end. And I think that those of us who are at least uh, genuinely pursuing a better way are given these signs so that uh, we can see more clearly the way that we're going. And uh, and that that way is the way that leads to life. Um, I don't I don't I don't know about people who refuse to pay attention. I guess they'll just go headlong, you know into the future and, and whatever um, catastrophe is in store, they'll have to face it when they get to it. But I, I, I thank God for good warnings and um, omens, if you want to call it that, or signs. Uh, and Jesus encountered a young man one day uh, he asked, he said, can you, can you, don't you see that when the sky begins to turn dark, don't you know that a uh, storm is on the way? Well, then how come you can't read the signs of the time? And so as we read the tea leaves, as we look at what's going on around us, um, it's, it's time to understand that we are in a shift. Um, that a major change is taking place. And we sometimes we think it's a sudden change, but all the time signs have been given and we just fail to pay attention. Um, so I, I think that, and I'm not saying, I don't believe that it's the end of the world or anything like that. But um, Jesus talks about an age. There, there is a, a period of time during which life progresses in a certain way. And when that period is over, there's, there's a shift. And um, we move to another age. In other words, another span of time during which life is going to be much different than it was before. So I think that we're seeing, uh, I, I take it as a sign, the disintegration of our social order, the disintegration of our, our, our governmental structure, the disintegration of our families and relationships. Um, these things are signs of a change, a major change that is about to happen. 
and it behooves us to to at least pay attention and to, uh, as you would, if you saw a squall or a storm coming, mm -hmm. you would find safety, <laughs> go find a safe place. <laughs> and somebody wrote a song, Safe in the Arms of Jesus. Um, there are safe places for us to go. Uh, and when we get those warning signs, those clues along the way, don't miss it. Pay attention. Govern yourselves accordingly, as they used to say. You know, Dr. Hayes, as you were talking, so much ran through my mind. Uh, the first one was the quote, I believe, by Maya Angelou, who said, when people tell you who they are or show who they are, believe them. I think that's the quote. And 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 so we that, and so there's no surprise. There's no gotcha because we've been shown or even been told if somebody mm -hmm. says they're going to they're going to overthrow the government believe them even though their rhetoric it may may couch it as rhetoric or hyperbole people say things words have power um also when you think about um the warning signs if you will I think about the the song that Prince wrote in his um Sign of the Times album, actually. He wrote it in 1987. And, and it, I remember some of the words that saying something about Hurricane Annie um, ripped the ceiling out of church to kill everybody inside. Um, uh, in France, a skinny man died of a big disease with a little name. So, you know, they was talking about AIDS, right? Uh, and, and talking about drug abuse and, and all this other kind of stuff. And and he went on to say these were the signs of the time. Um, prolific writing uh, in the in the music in this album entitled "Signs of the Time." And we have we have a lot of signs. And and again, the end of the age or the era is it is what it is. And uh, and that's okay. I was speaking the other day to this group of college students, and I always go with these amendments like the Thirteenth, Fourteenth, Fifteenth, Nineteenth Amendment. And something got to me about um, looking at the 26th Amendment. And, and the 26th Amendment was written in 1971. And it was to uh, reduce, to lower the voting age <laughs> from 21 to 18. 18. Mm -hmm. That was just over 50 years ago. I'm 55. So 1965 was the Voting Rights Act that gave, that gave black women the right to vote. It was an amendment to the Constitution. The 14th Amendment gave all men, including black men, the right to vote. And that was passed in like 1865 or something like that. 15th Amendment, 1865. Then you fast forwarded Civil Rights Act of 1965. And then you get six years later you get the voting rights age lowered. And I just wonder for people who lived in that time, if they even thought of the significance of living during the time where another amendment to the constitution was in place to lower the voting age. And the irony of it is this, that in October of 2023, just a few months ago, Senator Elizabeth Warren um, wrote a ratification to this 26th Amendment to reduce the voting age from 18 to 16. You mm -hmm. talk about signs at the time. I never thought that voting age was 21. That was not in my consciousness. I always knew it was 18. And now I might see in my lifetime the age changed to 16. Why not let 16 year olds vote? They can drive, they can get a job. Why not have their voice count for a lot of reasons, for a whole lot of reasons, maybe because their lifespan at 16 would be a whole lot longer to have to live with public policy than those at, at the end of the age spectrum, if you will. You're 80 years old and 90 years old. A 16-year-old would have to live 
with this whole policy that's configured. So this is like a shifting of the age. It makes sense. Why not allow that to happen? Operating a motor vehicle, especially in a snow squall, but we trust these kids to do different things, to cook your food at these fast food restaurants. Why not trust their voting prowess? I mean, it's a deep thing. I probably trust a 60-year-old over 18-year-old because the 18-year-old think they grown. And it became mannish or womanish, smelling themselves, as they used to say. 60-year-old still a little malleable. And 21. I just can't even imagine. That's the legal age to drink. Um, and I guess that was equivalent. The 21 age was incongruent, was congruent with prohibition. You know, we'll have the age to drink and the right to vote at the same time. Still, the frontal lobe is not fully developed to 25. So is there much of a difference between a 25-year-old and a 16-year-old? The way people vote, really, uh, uh, mental acuity doesn't have much to do with it. Apparently not. Say that for the people <laughs> in the back. <laughs> it, you know, it's whether or not I like you and uh, and whether or not I believe you'll do what you say you will do. If I give you the opportunity, if I give you my vote, will you truly represent me? And, and that's basically listen? what a vote is about. Do I trust you to represent uh, me, my concerns, my needs, and my safety. So why not? See, why 16 not? year olds know a whole lot more than a lot of us my age. And uh, they've been exposed to so much. The, the, the education is so vast. And hopefully, uh, getting them engaged in and civic things early will will condition them to always be involved in in public life and what goes on uh, in the structures that that govern us. I think it's a good thing. Well, let's keep that in the atmosphere, Doctor Hayes. Yeah, but you know, you know, certain people don't 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 want anybody to vote because. They're afraid that they won't vote for them. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they know they won't vote for them. So they're trying to take away the right to vote. So that's good. an ongoing struggle. But as you said, it's the end of an era. And the one thing that people like to do is to hold on to what was. I mean, whether it's dying the hair or getting injected with Botox or having plastic surgery or all this other kind of stuff. They just, the, the mind can't believe when the body betrays. And that to me is a huge cognitive disconnect. And to live into the stage of being um, a, a sage, you know, that embodiment of wisdom, that's a gift. And, and to, to let somebody else do the work. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I've earned my space in AARP. I don't care. Ain't nobody got to tell me nothing. I want all of my discounts and everything else. I want to. I want to work. I'm telling you, I, I done worked hard. I'm ready to slow it down. I'm ready to ease on into the next. I was listening, and this is a bird walk, but I'm gonna end with this, and you can wrap it up. I was listening to the View, and Jody Foster was on there, and she said, you know, when when she was fifty. She said she was just real anxious. Just an Oscar, Emmy Award winner. Just real anxious. Just, just got to go, got to go, got to accomplish. Because 50 felt like, man, I'm 50. Yeah, she you, said, you but You haven't gotten it done by now. You, you know, you're chances rushing, you're yeah. rushing. Yeah. And she said, but something hit, hit when I turned 60. It was like I got an in, inoculation of something like life is good. <laughs> I'm all right. And I'm saying, 
I don't even have to wait for 60. I got that when I turned 40 to tell you the truth. And 50 has just been fabulous. I don't know what 60 going to look like, but I, I didn't even know it took the incremental decades to for some. And I'm so grateful. Maybe I am the old soul, but I ain't trying to get to nothing else that I ain't. You know, I did the work, went hard in the paint when I was able. What what Jesus? What did the Bible say? Work while it's yet day, yes, because day. there will come a time. Night come, when, night come. Woo, when no one night is work. coming, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing night. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hold on to nothing, too. Yeah, I'm wait. I'm watching. Listen, I'm watching. I, I'm, the, I, I'm on the night watch, um, <laughs> trying to see what I, I can see, mm -hmm. and uh, and do what I can do, and not worry about what I can't. So, and that's it, peace, okay. Doctor Hayes. That's peace. Mm -hmm. That's peace. The struggle don't have to be nothing. Just peace. We earned it. Good God. All right, give us some final thoughts, Dr. Hayes, that's, with these signs. My, my final thought is, you know, enjoy where you are in life because you won't come this way again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Every age has its blessings. The and I'm living in mine right now. All right. Me too. Till next time, Doc. It has been a privilege, a pleasure, and an honor to have you join in with us today. Remember that everything will be all right until we meet again. Stay safe.